So in this SUVAT problem, we have James dropping a stone into a well, and he hears the splash as the stone hits water two and a half seconds later. Determine the speed at which the stone hits the water and find the depth of the well. What modelling assumptions have you used? OK, so let's draw a diagram just so we can visualise what's going on here. OK, so we have this well and there's water at the bottom. OK, and we are dropping the stone down into the well. So if we think about those modelling assumptions that we're using here, I would just be a starting to assume, well, assuming just to solve the problem, that I am dropping the stone. Um, I am not throwing the stone down, so I'm just holding it over the top of the well and dropping it. Okay. Now, I'm not, all, I'm not going to be taking the height of myself um, into account. So I'm going to assume that I'm dropping it from the very top of the well. Okay. So if the well is on the floor, then I'm not holding it over and it's not like a metre high or something like that, OK? I'd also be assuming that the stone doesn't hit the sides as it goes down. I'd also be treating it like a particle, so there's not going to be any spin to the particle. And also that there's no air resistance, OK? And then lastly, we could say, well, the elephant in the room is the fact that you drop the stone into the well and then here's the splash two and a half seconds later. OK, so the assumption is that the stone hitting the water is precisely the same time at which James hears the splash. Now, in reality, that wouldn't be the case because we're not taking into account the speed of sound. OK, so if you were actually trying to work this out correctly, you'd have to take that into account as well. OK, so with another assumption that the acceleration is constant, we can then use the SUVAT equations. So S-U-V-A-T. So um, 2.5 seconds is how long it is falling, OK? The acceleration is just going to be due to gravity. I'm not throwing the stone down the well. I'm just letting it drop. So it's just going to drop under gravity. So if we use 9.8 metres per second per second as gravity, because it's dropping, OK, then it's, it's accelerating downwards. So we're going to take that as minus 9.8. The initial velocity, because I'm just dropping the stone, it's from rest and then dropping it, it has an initial velocity of zero meters per second. OK, so the first thing that we want to find is the speed at which the stone hits the water. So I want to find the final velocity when it hits the water. So the SUVAT equation will be the one that doesn't involve the S, which is number one. So we're going to go with that V equals U plus AT. So u is 0, a is minus 9.8, and t is 2.5. OK, so we have minus 9.8 times 2.5, which is minus 24.5. OK, so the speed, because that's taking the direction into account, is hitting the water going that way, vertically downwards, at 24.5 metres per second. The speed is equal to 24.5 or 25 metres per second to two significant figures. Because we're using gravity at two significant figures, our result must be to two significant figures as well. Then the depth of the well. So if this was an exam question, OK, and this was part B to the exam question, then you don't know whether you've got part A right. So you've got to be careful. If you can avoid using a previous result, sometimes that can be a good thing, OK? Because we don't know whether we've got that bit right. So if I ignore having that result, I can still work out S with the other three remaining pieces. So I can go for the equation that doesn't have uh, V, which is number three. So S is equal to UT plus one half 
at squared. So that's equal to 0 times t, so 0 times 2.5, plus 1 half times minus 9.8 times t squared. Okay, so we've got minus 0 0.5 times 9.8 times 2.5 squared, which is minus 30.625. Okay, now this is in meters and it's in, that is the displacement okay, of the stone. So the depth of the well is actually equal to 31 meters to the two significant figures, okay? And so that is how we can solve this problem.